Hey, what's up, everybody? Pico CTF 2022. Let's dive in. All right, I am in my Kali Linux virtual machine. I have a text editor open, I have a command line open, and I have the web browser open for Pico CTF 2022 in their game. We're cruising onwards into a reverse engineering category challenge called Safe Opener. This is, hey, can you open the safe? I forgot the key to my safe, but this program is supposed to help me with retrieving the lost key. Can you help me unlock my safe? Put the password you recover into the Pico CTF flag format just like this, and we could get started on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this file. I'm right clicking to copy the link address, and I'll move back to my terminal where I can move into the reverse engineering category folder we've been working out of. Let's make a directory for safe opener, and let's download this file. Ooh, okay, so this is a safe opener.java file, which means that we're gonna be looking at Java code. Uh, it is Java source code, and that is something that, hey, you know, could very well create a program. Super easy, but uh, it's different than what we've been working with, right? We've been in previously in Python or in C. Now we're working out in Java. So, okay, so we import some libraries, input and output, utilities, and we have a public class with the same name as the file, which is how you would end up kind of structuring your program if you create this as a class to be ran within Java. Anyway, we end up creating a main function inside of that class. That's actually gonna end up running and executing as our program. We have a buffer reader object as our keyboard. Looks like that is gonna be reading in some of the code. We also have a base64 encoder, which we could encode data in. Have an encoded key, a key set as empty string, int i set to zero and Boolean is open. Nice and easy. So we check with inside of a while loop, while i is less than three, assuming we increment it or add to it over time, we enter the password for the safe by reading in from our keyboard. We encode the key with our base64 encoder object, encoding it to string the original bytes, and we print out that encoded key. If we have a safe is open with a open safe function that's defined down below, if it's not open, if that open safe will return a false variable, uh, it would say, hey, you only have however many attempts left in increment i. Okay, otherwise we would break. So that's it. Public static boolean open safe, this is the function that's actually going to be executed and tested against. It's checking the password passed in as an argument and checking if our password that we gave it as part of the function equals the encoded key. And then it says, okay, sesame open. And it's not gonna give us the flag because we know, oh, it's just gonna be the password that is our flag. Um, but this is kind of silly because we know, okay, all that we're doing to our password is base64 encoding it. Uh, I know we probably chatted about base64 in previous videos, or I, I just probably might have referred to it here and there. If if you just don't happen to know, and let me give you a super duper quick background, base64 is just a way to represent data. When we talk about decimal values like base10, we talk about hexadecimal values base16, base64 is another way to represent a whole lot of bytes, like non-printable characters and real file contents in a way that could be very, very easily passed across the wire and like included in packets or URLs because it's all going to be represented in plain text characters and letters and numbers that could, hey, not have to be represented as raw non-printable bytes. It uses plus signs and forward slashes for other special characters and will have padding in there at the very, very end with equal signs. There is a gimmick in that, hey, a base64 encoded string always has to be a length that is a multiple of four. So sometimes you'll see values or encoded data that is including padding a couple times in their equal signs there. I'll show you that here. Let me super duper quick. Let's echo please subscribe into, pipe it into our base64 command line tool. And that's something that's built in on Linux. So you could use that practically anywhere. Uh, and you'll notice, hey, it has an equal sign there. Notice it has to be the encoded value that has a length that is a multiple of four. Our input doesn't have to be that. Uh, so. Let's add an exclamation point in there. Oh, sorry. Um, 
that might need to have the single quotes to properly recognize I want to use the exclamation point. And so that doesn't have padding in here, but if I added yet another exclamation point, that should tack in some equal signs for padding to get the length to match out. Now, you might just be able to pick up and recognize the structure and style of Base64 in that you kind of train your eye for the random assortment of capital letters versus numbers versus lowercase letters, etc. Certainly, the equal signs are a telltale that help you to discover and determine this, but you also just get used to seeing, hey, there's sort of a roller coaster ramp for uppercase and lowercase letters. Weird thing, right? But it is super important to note, Base64, while it's an encoded representation of data, it's a two-way street. You can decode that data just as easily, and we've done that before in previous videos. I probably didn't talk about it just as much because it was, hey, kind of a rabbit hole, quick tangential thing, but our Base64 program on the command line can do that nice and easy for us. Let's say we took this encoded value, or UG, X, L, Y, or whatever. Let's grab that string, and let me echo that into base64 minus D, or tack D to decode. Now we get the original value, or the plain text that we saw to begin with. Now you could do some weird stuff, right? Let's say we pipe this into base64 again, and then base64 decoded that, and did whatever we wanted to. Or we could just make like a mat matryoshka doll, <laughs> I always say that wrong, or just keep tacking on base64, and keep encoding already encoded data. It's just text, you're just manipulating it, you're just rendering it and formatting it in a different way, but then you'd have to decode it all those different times. Whatever. Anyway, all that is to say, this password, if it's just gonna end up checking what our password might be, whether or not it's base64 encoded or not, if our password is encoded and it's checking against an encoded password that's saved here in plain text, we could grab this and decode this. There we go. <laughs> That's it. Please let me into the safe in lead speak. And we want to wrap that in Pico CTF format, right? Um, how quickly, how easily can I do that? Can I, I want to make like a quick one liner for this. Uh, I know you could use like XARGs to be able to make that a thing. How do you represent the data that you retrieved from XARGs? I always get that wrong. I know you can like, sure, pipe this into a wow read loop that, and you could then echo, oh, whatever iterator that you just gave there, like line might be the input that you read. And that way we can do that loop and wrap it in a done statement. That looks kind of bad though. In fact, I, it's not even, Echoing that out. Am I doing something wrong there? I don't know. Is that putting it on centered output or centered error? Who cares? I'm making more of this of an issue than I need to be. Could I just simply like print F, whatever the input is? Let's echo Pico CTF um, with our curly braces and then some command substitution to denote that. <laughs> Dumb, stupid, and easy. I'm using the dollar sign parentheses to use our command substitution. And you guys knew that trick from Bash and Z Shell earlier. We've, we've seen that in other videos. But that is literally all that this took. We can save that as our solution. We could then run our get flag script whenever we want. We have our flag.txt and we can call this challenge finished and done. Okay, we'll copy that, paste it in. And that was our safe opener challenge. Maybe not a whole lot of reverse engineering, but just piecing it together, looking through Java, or excuse me, Java code and determining what they were doing with Base64. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening in. I hope you enjoyed that challenge. Maybe just hey, quick know-how on Base64. You're, see, you're gonna see Base64 literally all the time and capture the flag and cybersecurity and anything that you do in tech. It's super duper common. And again, you will train your eye for it if you haven't seen it before. So that's it. <laughs> Enough of me rambling. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. YouTube algorithm stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know it. See you, everybody.